Hello, Layden Lovestone here. Thank you for joining me on this part two of the English Saddle Flap Tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna start um, just by going back to our knee rolls here. So this, uh, these knee rolls were glued onto this leather and then we let it dry. So that one um, was all dry and now I'm just gonna wet the edges of the, weather, of the leather. You don't want to get this too wet because you don't want the wetness separating what you've already glued down. Um, but you do want the edges to be damp because um, it's just going to reduce the amount of bulk that you have um, when you when you do um, fold the flaps over and glue them down. So again, to reduce some bulk, I'm going to take my scissors and I'll cut around the edges um, just to reduce the amount of flap that's there. I don't need too much flap, I just need enough to get it to the back of the knee roll piece. Um, if you have too much bulk on it, sometimes it will just look a little bit too um, off of the flap itself. Um, you want to make sure it looks like it is one cohesive piece. So. If I have too much bulk on the back of the knee roll, it'll stand out a little bit too much. And you know, sometimes that does happen. And if you were to have that happen, all you have to do is let it dry out. Um, and then once the leather is dry and hard, you can take an X-Acto and shave the back of it off, just like you were skiving. But just on the, some of the folds that will occur once you do um, fold these flaps over. So again, uh, wetting the leather again, I want it to be like the perfect amount of dampness that it's not going to be too bulky and it's not also not too wet that it's uh, sliding around that where I don't want it to be. And again, uh, because we've glued the leather down onto the foam, we don't want the uh, that adhesion to, um, like if it gets too wet, the like I use a, a water-based glue so the adhesion will kind of come off. So I want to make sure that the glue that I've already put it put down is not too wet. And as I'm wetting the flaps of the leather, um, it's just soaking in enough that it's just damp on the edges. So where I'm going to be folding it. Sometimes I'll also cut a few slits into the um, rounded edges of the um, anything that I'm going to be covering in leather just because uh, it can also reduce some of the bulk. But uh, here we are. So now this is the gluing phase. So now I've got the leather at the correct amplifs for the, all these flaps that are going to be folding around this knee roll. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue all along the edge there. Again, I use like a water-based glue. It's like non-toxic stuff, so I don't mind using my fingers. But if you do have a more toxic glue, just be careful. Um, and then, so yeah, put some glue on the edges and then just fold it over and hold. Um, this takes a little while sometimes. Um, just, you have to have patience. Um, you want to make sure that the glue is dry before you go on to the next part of the knee roll. But just a little bit of glue, press and hold and wait, and uh, then move on to the next little bit, all the way around. And again, if you have a little bit of bulk on the back of this knee roll, um, you can remove it later once it's all dried out. It'll be um, nice and hard, so that way uh, when you do, say you use an X-Acto blade to um, cut it off, it won't move the rest of the piece. Like when it's when the leather is wet and you're using an X-Acto knife, it will move the leather with it because it's really pliable when it's wet. So just make sure that you let the uh, piece dry before you start um, just cutting off little extra bits if it's too bulky on the back. So once you have all the flaps of the knee rolls all glued down, we're going to set them aside and let them dry. And I'm going to work on the pan, uh, sorry, the flap again. I'm going to take this flat piece and I'm going to wet it again. 
um, common theme in these tutorials, wetting the leather again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the stitch marks here. So these are stitch marks that go along the knee roll. And how I'm going to figure that out where to put those stitches is I'm going to put the knee roll in the place where that I would like it. And I'm going to take my little handy dandy marking tool that you saw earlier. And I'm going to just trace around the edge of the knee roll. This definitely works be best if you wait for the knee roll to dry. That way it's not going to be moving around um, on you. Uh, again, when the leather's wet, it does. it's more pliable and it moves more. So you definitely won't, would like that knee roll to be completely dried and hard so that it's holding the shape that you want it in. So I'm just going to uh, mark around the edge there and just um, that way I know how far that knee roll actually comes out from that flap. So there you can see the edge and it, it is a bit off from where I originally tooled, you can see. Um, so that, that, that's how you can see like it doesn't, that tooling part of the knee roll isn't necessarily necessary because it does get covered up. I just like it as a little bit of a guide for me. It does not, it doesn't take too long to do so that's why I do it. So here you go. Um, I've got that marked on either side and I'm going to take my pounce wheel. So this is um, the tool that I use for stitch marking. It's called a pounce wheel. That's P-O-U-N-C-E. And wetting my leather again, because anytime I'm going to make marks in my leather, I want it wet so that way it will uh, take a shape better. So here we go with the pounce wheel. I just take it all along that line and then just roll it along. It's super easy to do. And of course, since uh, this is probably the part that most people would like to see my camera cut out and do not record that part. <laughs> um, but what I just did, I just roll the pounce wheel along and create my stitch mark. It's really straightforward. Um, maybe one day I'll do a video um, all about the pounce wheel. That way we can really see it in action and you can see like different sizes and, and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so put those stitch marks in and of course everyone thing had to sit and dry before I, ca I can actually glue the knee rolls onto the flap. So now it's time to re-wet it. <laughs> um, so this is the part where we're kind of finalizing things. We are going, to, we're preparing to glue the knee rolls onto the panel, or sorry, onto the flap. And um, we're just uh, kind of just getting ready for shaping and, and stuff like that. So I just noticed that there's just a little rip in the back of this flap. So I'm just going to glue it back down. It's not a big issue. Um, generally little, sometimes things happen. And um, you can usually just repair it um, fairly, um, fairly invisibly by just putting a little bit of glue down and gluing it back down. Of course, if this was a bigger rip or um, it was in a more obvious spot, I might start from scratch, but this wasn't too bad. So uh, again, wetting the leather, you can see how this, how firm that piece of leather was. It was actually curling under itself. So um, yeah, you can see how wetting it changes that. So now I'm going to take the knee roll portions on the back here and just make sure that everything is nice and flat on the back. Here I take some scissors and cut off some um, little bits and sometimes I'll use my exacto depending on um, how they are. Always be careful when you're using your exacto blade on tiny little things like this. Um, but this time these were be uh, just poking out enough that I could just use scissors and cut them off. And I'll do so I'll show you how I would do the exacto cutting if I if it was necessary. It's not always necessary. Always 
really be careful. As you can see, this can be quite tight around the fingers and such. So really, really be careful using that X-Acto blade. Okay, so these knee rolls are ready to be put on here. And what I want to do now is I do want to make them wet. <laughs> um, I know you kind of think, well, why would you make them wet? Aren't they going to come undone? But yes, but no, in a sense that we're not going to make them too wet. We just want them um, sort of semi-pliable because they will be getting shaped along with the flap. So again, some more water onto my flap getting it ready because this will be like once these uh, once these knee rolls are glued on we're gonna be doing the final shaping so I definitely want everything to be able to be pliable at this point now here we are here's the mo the model um, we'll be shaping the saddle onto um, I've taken some handy vet wrap I love this stuff um, this is just the vet wrap you get at any horse store um, it's usually fairly cheap at least here um, I'll just basically do a wrap of toilet paper and then a wrap of vet wrap over top and it protects the models wonderfully um, now this way you don't have to worry about any uh, staining or anything on the model as it's drying and even, uh, even these little strappy bits here, these are all uh, bits of vet wrap. So it's great stuff. It sticks to itself, so you don't need any tape or anything. That's why it's wonderful. <laughs> if you uh, have ever owned a horse, a real horse, and have had them had an injury, you will, you will understand how amazing vet wrap is. <laughs> so I take my knee roll bit here. And I'm gonna cover it nicely in glue. And I'm gonna put it on the side that I want it. Now this is just pressing and holding and just waiting for it to glue. Um, this takes a little while. I really like to make sure um, things are glued down pretty well before I actually start the shaping process. but it's still important to wet the knee rolls before we put it on for shaping. Okay, so now that's got a fairly decent hold on it. I'm just gonna take off any excess glue that's poking out the sides. So. That's what I'm doing here, just pulling out any glue, wiping it away, just making sure that it's not globby or excess on there. It's just easier to clean up for later. And then I can go to my ne the next knee roll here. Do the same thing. Give it a nice coat of glue and put it in place. Okay, so now that you have that second knee roll in place, uh, what I like to do is I like to just uh, put something heavier on top of them and just let them sit. And uh, that way I'm not sitting there holding the glue for too long and I can go work on other projects. Um, of course, you can totally hold those by hand, make sure that they're staying in the right place. But I, gen I find that this, um, this technique works pretty well. I'll just let them sit for a good 10 or 15 minutes and just let them dry really well. So there you are. That's all nice and dry, but as you can see, it's still a bit damp from when we wet them before, which is exactly what I want. Because this next step is pretty important for your overall shape of your your saddle like this is like 
what I find in model horse tack to be the backbone of your saddle is this flap shape. And that's why I like to shape them to the horses themselves, just because that way um, they're sitting perfectly. <laughs> um, generally, like, like I'll do, I'll, I'll fit it to one model like I'm doing to True North, North here, but it will, the shape uh, relates in other ways to other horses. Like I can put the, these saddles on a different horse and it still fits really well. And it's gonna like keep that nice shape that I want it to be. So I'm just gonna, now that it's all wet and ready to be shaped, I'm gonna set it up on top of the horse and just make sure from the center of the flap is center with the horse, right? I wanna make sure that it's sitting exactly center here. I'm just trying to get a little bit better view on this as I do this wrapping because this is quite important like this is like w how the for like the shape of your saddle will be um, so I'm gonna center it up and then I want to make sure that I'm putting the flap in the place that is correct for the saddle um, this is a close contact saddle so the flaps are a bit forward but we still need to make sure that the tree is going to sit in the correct place on the horse's back. So holding the flaps and bending them along, or sorry, holding the knee roll and bending them along with the flap. And as you can see, because the leather is wet, it will start to hold the shape that you want. Um, so now my biggest thing is making sure that I have this flap in the correct position and then I'm just using these vet wrap strips and just wrapping it around. And as I said, this vet wrap is great. It sticks to itself. So you don't need any glue when you're using this material. And I just let it stick where I need it. Okay, so now that, that first one's on there. So the next bit that I'm concerned about is the knee roll itself. So I want to make sure because the top of these knee rolls will be poking up a little bit. I'm going to put another little extra dab of glue in the corner just to make sure that they get glued down. You don't want the tops of the knee roll to be sticking upwards. So I'm just going to make sure that's glued down uh, with a little bit of glue. Just wiping away some of the excess just to make sure it's not globby. Do it on the other side here as well. And then I can take another strip and I'm gonna focus on the knee roll portion of the flap here. I'm just making sure there's no excess glue here sticking out. I wanna make sure it's lining up properly. And then I'm gonna lay that vet wrap strip right on top of that knee roll, especially at the top corners there, just to make sure that they actually form the shape of the saddle. Now it doesn't have to, these uh, wrap bits, they don't have to be too tight. You just, you're just holding the saddle onto the model. So there you can see those uh, knee rolls are covered quite well and making a nice rounded shape for our flap. The one caution, bit of caution is just to watch where your uh, stirrup leather keepers are. You wanna make sure that you're not crushing them so they're not, um, you know, go getting all misshapen or, or anything. Now I've used this vet wrap quite a lot these strips so they're starting to lose their stickiness but I've probably wrapped um, probably 30 saddles with those stri strips so these things this vet wrap lasts quite a long time if you're not using them for wounds <laughs> and you can just reuse the same piece of vet wrap over and over again 
That's one of the reasons why I love this stuff so much. And it has so many applications. I've It's helped me out in so many different binds. So uh, definitely get the vet route when you're doing these saddles. It'll definitely help you shape these. So now that this is on there, I'm just going to let it sit. I'm going to let it dry probably overnight. And through the magic of YouTube, it's overnight already and this has dried. So we will unwrap it and see our result. So yeah, this is sit, sat overnight here. It's all dry and all ready to be revealed. I'll just put those straps away and probably use them for another saddle. And now when you're pulling this up, it will be a little bit sticky to the vet wrap. But I just pull it up gently and it'll come out. Um, generally, it doesn't leave any residue. If it does, it's very easily cleanable with a little bit of water. So if you have any of that, uh, the vet wrap residue on it, which is very, very rarely does it happen. Generally, it will only happen just because the piece was wet when you had wrapped it. Um, but very easily, easy to clean off. Just uh, get a little bit of water, damp it on there, and then you'll be able to wipe it right off. At this point, I would wipe away or clean off any glue bits or anything like that that um, were left over as well, just to make sure that we're ready for the next stage of construction. And the other bit that I'm going to be concerned about at this stage is just making sure that there's no extra excess leather poking out in front of this knee roll here. So just taking scissors and trimming off any excess leather sticking out here. Eventually, uh, what will be put on the front of the knee rolls here is a bit of piping. So I want to just make sure it's flat. Uh, make sure that no little bits of leather are just sticking out. And just making sure that all the glue is glued down really well as well any of the glue parts and then obviously cleaning any of the glue as well and once you finish those little details there you have finished the construction of the English saddle flap complete with knee rolls so as you can see there, uh, the, the flap will now keep its shape quite well. It's quite stuck in that shape and uh, will withstand any lifting up when you're actually, when the saddle's constructed and you're actually lifting up the flaps for the girth and such. Um, and it has a nice, nice round shape, good uh, sturdiness to it now that it's all dry and ready for the next step so stay tuned you guys like share and subscribe to my channel i love doing these tutorial videos and i have many more planned in the future so next step of the english saddle coming soon thanks so much you guys take care